Hello everybody and welcome back. Here I am with another Canon vs Sony comparison. There are already multiple in-depth videos available on my channel featuring previous models, even more articles on my website, but this time we're looking specifically at the R6 Mark II versus the A7 Mark IV. There are a lot of things to talk about, so let's begin. The R6 Mark II is slightly larger and heavier than the A7 Mark IV, and both cameras offer weather sealing. The Canon design is my favorite, mainly because it has a larger, taller and more rounded grip. I find the camera more comfortable to hold and use, especially with large lenses. The A7 IV grip is not terrible, but I have to squeeze my fingers a bit more. I miss extra space at the bottom when using medium to large lenses, like for example the 135mm f1.8. The dials are a bit smoother to turn on the R6, otherwise both cameras offer precise controls when it comes to the buttons, as well as an excellent autofocus joystick at the rear. Both cameras feature a dedicated lever to switch between photo and video mode. This means you can conveniently use the main dial on both models to change shooting mode, manual, aperture priority, etc., as well as use any of the custom modes for still and video. The A7 IV has 12 custom buttons versus 7 on the R6 Mark II. These can be configured separately for still and video, and it is also possible to keep settings such as exposure, picture profile, and white balance separate between the two modes. Extra customization is found with the My Menu section, as well as the Quick Menu for Canon and the Function Menu for Sony. The main menu system and graphic interface is quite different. I find the Canon version more straightforward to learn for the most part, but the Sony is definitely much better organized than previous cameras. The viewfinder is quite similar when it comes to specs. The only difference is the higher magnification on the Sony, but I find both cameras satisfying to use and comfortable enough when wearing glasses. The rear monitors are also similar. They come with a multi-angle mechanism and they are touch sensitive. Only the resolution favors the Canon. You'll find two memory card slots on each model. The R6 Mark II uses two SD cards with UHS-2 compatibility. The A7 IV does the same, but slot number one is hybrid and can also take a CFexpress Type-A card. The latter is more expensive but offers faster writing and reading speed. It can help with buffer and is necessary to record 4K 60p at the maximum quality with the slow and quick motion mode. Battery life is similar overall, but as you can see in this table, the Canon does a bit better for stills and video. USB charging and power delivery is available for both cameras, and there is also an official battery grip made by Sony and Canon. One annoying detail about the S7 IV, however, is that the battery charger is not included. Only the USB cable and the AC adapter are provided in the box. Let's finish the chapter with the physical connectors. The R6 II and A7 IV have a microphone input, headphone output, a 10 gigabit per second USB-C port, HDMI output, full size on the Sony, micro size on the Canon, and they both have a multifunction shoe with digital audio support. The A7 IV and R6 II feature a full-frame sensor, but the pixel count is different. Additionally, the Sony sensor has a BSI design, with BSI meaning backside illuminated. The first test gives you an idea of the quality of detail rendering. No extra sharpness was added to the raw files, apart from the parameters Lightroom loads by default. The next scene has a high contrast between the dark interior and the sunny outdoor. Find the best middle ground exposure and both cameras do well with shadow and highlight recovery. Push the histogram to more extremes and the difference remains very small concerning the shadows. If we overexpose the window, however, the A7 IV manages to save a few extra details on the sea 
and the parking lot in the background. The ISO range is slightly different, specifically concerning the normal ISO values. In the third test, you can see the difference between the two cameras is contained once again. The S7 IV shows more noise overall, but it's a small trade-off in exchange for the extra resolution. If we look at the JPEGs and each camera's noise reduction capability, I much prefer the results of the R6. Even with noise reduction set to off, there is no color noise, unlike with the A7. When set to standard, the Canon image is more clean and has more vibrant colors. However, it also loses more details in the dark areas, especially on the doll's hair. Let's have a look at the built-in color profiles of each camera, the Canon picture styles, and the Sony creative looks. These can be customized with various parameters. I will only show you the results with the default settings. First, we have a landscape image taken near sunset time, so the sunlight was warm. The Canon has more reds, the Sony leans towards green, and it becomes very apparent with the landscape and vivid profiles. With skin tones, the R6 Mark II displays more contrast and a slightly warmer result when using the standard style. Red tones dominate the portrait style on the Canon, whereas the Sony version has less contrast and a softer look. As always, I found neutral to give the most balanced result on the R6 model, whereas the same profile on the 74 has less saturation. The R6 Mark II features the Dual Pixel CMOS AF2 system from Canon. The S7 IV uses a mix of phase detection and contrast detection points. Both cameras come with an advanced software and a deep learning algorithm. They can recognize a variety of subjects, and these are the ones stated officially by the two companies. The list is just an indication, especially when it comes to animals. For example, Dogs and cats mean that every animal that looks similar or come from the same family will be detected, like tigers, lions, etc. And actually, the A74 is also capable of detecting horses and zebras. The Sony only detects the eye of an animal or bird, whereas the Canon can also detect the head and body. The R6 II has an auto option that will automatically recognize the type of subject without the need to select a setting manually. I didn't have a chance to try the vehicle option, but had more luck with birds. Overall, these two cameras do really well, even if the subject is partially covered by branches or leaves. The R6 has a better rating in low light, and both cameras can work with phase detection down to f22 during continuous shooting, so using teleconverters with zoom lenses should maintain optimal autofocus performance. Looking at my low light test, the Canon was able to deliver a much better keeper rate than the Sony. The S7 IV struggled to adjust focus as the subject was walking forward, resulting in less photos taken as well. The same test with 4K video shows the S7 IV is closer to the R6 performance. It struggles less to follow the person from start to finish. In fact, it is the Canon that is slightly slower near the end when the subject stops. I had the chance to use these two cameras at a number of events, particularly with concerts and comedy, so I can share extra feedback and photos with you. Although the S7 IV proved inferior in my low light test, which to be fair is a bit extreme, the camera didn't disappoint with performance on stage, as long as the scene was decently lit. I still think the R6 II is superior, mainly because it can handle better, more critical light conditions, and also find it a bit more precise when the artist is facing sideways. 
but all things considered, you can get great results with both cameras in this kind of situation. In daylight, the R6 Mark II wins again with a very similar keeper rate to the low light test. The S7 IV did better with 79%, a result that is consistent with previous reviews. The Sony struggled more when the subject was close to the camera, resulting in more autofocus images. In video mode, the performance is even, but here the R6 is a bit slower in keeping track of the subject when she turns on herself. Then we have the test many of you like, birds in flight. In this case, they really perform in the same way. And what I mean by that is that they rarely miss focus on the background. They are both extremely reactive and very quick in correcting focus inside the same sequence. This is the keeper rate I got with the two cameras, as well as how they compare to other models. It's important to say that the R6 Mark II has the same performance but works four times faster than the Sony in continuous shooting mode. And that is something. The R6 II and A7 IV can shoot up to 1 8,000th of a second with the mechanical shutter. The Canon has a more discreet shutter sound in comparison to the Sony, as you're about to hear. The electronic shutter allows you to take a picture without any sound coming from the mechanical curtains, but that's where the S7 IV capability ends. The R6 II can do more with the electronic shutter. It can increase the shutter speed and it can shoot in continuous mode up to 40 frames per second. The advantage for the Canon doesn't stop here. It has a faster sensor readout and that translates into less distortion when moving quickly with the camera, also known as rolling shutter effect. Then we have buffer, and here the performance of the two cameras is influenced by many variables, sensor resolution, drive speed, and the type of memory card used. The R6 Mark II doesn't do miracles when shooting at 20 frames per second or 40 frames per second. With the latter speed in particular, the buffer is full after two seconds, and the annoying part is that the camera will stop shooting for several seconds rather than continuing at a slower speed straight away. You can improve the performance by selecting Compact RAW, but be aware that strong shadow recovery on that file in post delivers less quality than the normal RAW version, something that doesn't happen on the Sony. The performance of the Canon is much better at 12 frames per second, and that is the closest speed to the Sony, so easier to compare. With the CF Express Type A card, the S7 IV never slows down. With the SD card, the performance with RAW is much slower than the Canon. The R6 Mark II has an extra function you won't find in the S7 IV, the RAW Burst Mode. It works at 30 frames per second, meaning with the electronic shutter, and delivers a superior buffer by writing all the frames into one big RAW file, rather than saving all the images separately. Furthermore, such feature offers the pre-shooting mode where the camera starts to load and refresh 15 frames in the buffer memory before you fully press the shutter button. This is great to capture moments that are difficult to anticipate, such as these small birds flying off. The downside of this mode is that you have to extract single RAW files manually and one by one, using either the camera in playback mode or the Canon Digital Photo Professional software on your computer. Both cameras feature in-body 5-axis image stabilization. The R6 II has a maximum rating of 8 stops, but that will vary depending on the lens used. The S7 IV rating is 5.5 stops. I took 10 pictures at various shutter speeds to see how far I could push the two cameras with slow exposures. I used the Canon 24-105mm f4 
and the Sony 24-105mm 4, both of these lenses are stabilized, so the two cameras combined sensor and optical stabilization together. Overall, the R6 Mark II shows a superior performance all along, with a consistent higher keeper rate until we reach a safe shutter speed for both cameras. I was able to push the Canon down to 2 seconds, an exposure time that is certainly not easy to manage, but possible with patience and the will to try more than once. The S7 IV struggles to deliver a consistent performance until I set the speed to 1 fourth of a second and I had to go to 1 15th of a second to finally see a good keeper rate. When recording video, a static scene shot handheld would give the Canon an advantage, the footage from the R6 is more stable. When walking, the R6 Mark II provides a smoother and more stable footage overall. The S7 IV struggles much more to compensate for every of my movements. There are additional settings you can use. On the R6 II, you have digital IS with two levels. On the S7 IV, you have the active mode. These are electronic stabilization, so the field of view changes. Digital IS on the Canon does improve the performance a little with static shots, whereas the active mode on the Sony doesn't really make a difference. When walking, digital IS doesn't add a lot more stability on the R6, but reduces the warp distortion visible at the four corners of the image, which is a common problem with 5-axis stabilization. The active mode on the S7 IV makes the footage look much better when put side by side with the R6 II. Another option only available on the S7 IV is to leave the stabilization off and use the Sony Catalyst software in post. The advantage in comparison to other stabilization functions of popular applications such as Final Cut and Premiere is that Catalyst uses the gyro sensor data of the camera so it can stabilize to a higher degree of precision. With my working test, Catalyst definitely gives the best result. Note that you will get better details and less motion blur if you increase the shutter speed. The only problem I have with Catalyst is that sharpness decreases. I tried the free version, the paid version, all sorts of settings, but never managed to find a solution. You can bring sharpness back a little in post, but if any of you have a suggestion for this, I'm all ears. The R6 II and A7 IV are two very capable cameras for video with 4K resolution, 10-bit, unlimited recording, and much more. They can work in 4K up to 60 frames per second, but only the R6 II can do this without sensor crop. The S7 IV works with the full width of the sensor up to 30p, but 60p means working with the Super 35 mode, which is the APS-C mode, basically. In Full HD, the R6 II can record up to 180 frames per second with the high frame rate mode, which works with no sound and delivers the slow motion result in camera. The S7 IV goes up to 120p, but you can choose to record such frame rate in normal mode meaning with sound, or via the SNQ mode to get the slow motion effect saved on the memory card. In my test, I found a very similar quality between these two cameras when it comes to sharpness. The 1080p footage is much softer, however, with visible traces of aliasing. You can record in 10 bit 422 internally, Bear in mind that on the R6 II, that is only available when selecting the log or HDR profiles. You can also see that the S7 IV has more choice of codecs and a higher bitrate. Concerning dynamic range and the log profiles, specifically C-Log3 and S-Log3, the brightness in the shadows is similar, but the Sony saves more information in the highlights. The R6 II offers something you won't find on the Sony model, 6K 12-bit RAW recording, but only via the HDMI output, 
and the optional Atomos Ninja 5 or 5 Plus recorder, so you're looking at an extra expense to get this feature. The Sony has more advanced settings to customize the image thanks to the picture profiles, that is where you'll find the S Cine Tone Curve and many other parameters. The R6 Mark II has a smaller ISO range for video, whereas the extended range is higher. The level of noise is similar as you increase the setting. The R6 II does produce a bit more noise overall, surprisingly so, I might add, but it's a small difference until you reach 51,200 ISO. Here the Canon starts to use the extended ISO, whereas the S7 IV still uses the native range, and the gap in quality increases. Obviously, we're talking about very high levels that hopefully you won't have to use often. In 4K 25p, the R6 Mark II shows less rolling shutter, especially when panning quickly. Neither camera has a 30 minute per clip limitation, so you can record without interruption until the cards are full or the battery is empty. In my test, both cameras did well. The R6 II recorded uninterrupted for 2 hours and 15 minutes before the battery gave up. The S7 IV did just over 2 hours, so not far off. It goes without saying that all this depends on where you are filming and how warm your location is. On the R6 Mark II, there is a handy temperature indicator that appears when the camera starts to be warm, with 10 bars that will go up progressively, giving you a decent indication on when it may stop. In my test, it only appeared when recording 4K 50p, but the battery ran out before I could see it reach the limit, and that is after 1 hour and 30 minutes. Both cameras have a lot of extra features, you can read them right now on the screen, and I'm probably forgetting a few more. These are all features that can be useful in specific situations, like the anti-flicker function that works with high frequencies, Sony calls it variable shutter, and it helps you to eliminate banding with LED lights for photos or when recording video. If you like macro photography, you may appreciate focus bracketing and focus stacking on the Canon. It works quite well, but it uses the electronic shutter, so no flash. Breathing compensation can be very useful for video makers because it eliminates the small changes in angle of view when you focus from the foreground to the background, although it only works with select lenses for each brand. Both cameras can be used as a webcam for streaming or high quality zoom calls, I suppose. You just need the USB cable no extra plugins or software are required. And of course we have my favorite manual focus assist, Focus Guide, that uses the dual pixel CMOS AF system of the R6 to tell you how much to adjust and in which direction. It's so intuitive and accurate. Another point, of course, is the price. It's the same in US dollars, but the Canon is more expensive to buy if you live in Europe. Last point, the lenses. Simply put, the Sony full-frame E-mount system started in late 2013, whereas the Canon EOS R started 5 years later, so there is more choice for the A7 IV when it comes to native lenses with autofocus, not just from Sony itself, but also Tamron, Sigma, and other third-party brands. Then you can add manual focus lenses and countless of opportunities with adapters and lenses from other systems, including Canon's DSLR lenses. Canon has a 5-year gap to close. It has done a very good job so far, there are a lot of high-end zooms for professionals, a good selection of affordable primes for enthusiasts, some interesting solutions that you don't see often, so it's looking good. But of course we need more, there is no support from third-party brands at the moment and I hope this could change in the future. I think many Canon users that switch to a mirrorless body today probably still rely on Canon EF lenses, especially if they have a good collection at home. 
Canon has made no less than three adapters and they work really well in terms of automation and autofocus. All right, I think I've covered almost everything. As usual, you can ask me any question in the comments if you want to know more and I'll answer them in the best way I can. Now, obviously these are two fantastic cameras to use in their own way, but there are important differences that you should consider. If you're interested in action photography, whether it is sports or wildlife, the R6 Mark II has more to offer thanks to the continuous shooting speed. Even without choosing the fastest option available, which limits the buffer, you can still work at double the speed in comparison to the s 74 The sensor readout is fast and the autofocus is among the best out there. The s 74 offers a lot of versatility in video mode when it comes to codecs, bitrate and image adjustments, but the R62 can record at 60p in 4K without crop, has much less rolling shadow and gives you the option of 12-bit ProRes RAW with the HDMI port. It also has better stabilization unless you use the Sony Catalyst software with the mount model. Design and ergonomics can be a very personal thing. I prefer the R62 overall, but some of you might disagree or might appreciate the customization offered by the Sony. The S74 has its own list of advantages, starting with the sensor that delivers a bit extra dynamic range, similar high ISO, but with the added benefit of more resolution. It really is a great sensor. Last but not least, the Sony E-mount system has an impressive selection of lenses now, from the brand and third parties. There is an option for every budget and need. And on these words, I'll say, Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.